I don't know what happened. There is an update on the phone, but I updated all my apps, so I don't know what happened. So I'm not going to try to go back and look at any, any, any comments because that's what got me in trouble. I'm not going to do it again. If you can't hear, then turn it off and go back in again. That's all I know to do. Something weird happened. It, something really weird happened. And I'm seeing Liz and Patty at the top of my screen. I've never seen that before. So I guess it's a new update. Anyway, so uh, my kitchen is spotless. Uh, I've wiped down everything. Everything looks wonderful. I finished up making my bone broth. I've reduced it. I strained it and I reduced it down by half. And then I have um, put it into four ice trays. And my four ice trays are... I even cleaned out a shelf in my freezer with a silver rag because it had some dirt on it and it may not be spotless because I couldn't figure out how to get it out of my freezer without breaking it. So I just put a hot silver rag in there and let it set for a second and got it clean. And I've got two silicone ice trays and two white ice trays full of bone broth freezing. I love to use this stuff for flavoring sauces or you name it i and i put it in the cup and drink it a couple of cubes with a cup of hot water and it's yummy 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 anyway today i started reading a new book that i want to read this weekend and it's been a couple of weeks since i've read a new book and that new book was the name of it is any way you can and it is a um, it's a journey of an internist, a doctor, and how she found the benefits of ketosis for her mom's cancer. So I'm reading this book. She is a down to earth speaker. She's re well, she, I'm hearing the book. I've also ordered the book for Leanne and it's the benefits of ketosis. And I'm only on chapter three, but I am loving this book already because she talks on our level. So any way you can is the name of the book. And it's by Dr. Dr. Bosworth, Bosworth, B-O-S. So, and she, what's weird is I was looking at, here's a YouTube video for you. I was watching a YouTube video last night that Leanne or Patty told me to watch and it came up next. Her video came up next. And I sent it to, to Leanne. Uh, she says Boz. She calls herself Doc Boz on her YouTube videos. But I think her name is spelled B-O-S. Bosworth. And, um, but check her out. She is, she is, um, she's got... She's got a lot of research behind what she's saying, and I am loving this book. And I've always told Robert, if I ever get diagnosed with some brain-wasting disease, just feed me nothing but coconut oil. <laughs> coconut oil. She is pretty sharp. So I think it was a God breeze that I saw the video and watched it because I usually don't go to the next video. I usually don't do that. I usually find the videos I want to watch and it just came up and I started watching. She hooked me from the beginning and then I looked her up on Amazon and it was really um, a, an amazing, amazing find. So I thank God for YouTube and Amazon and pulling people together and being able to recognize something for what it is because Leanne and I have been trying to get me into ketosis for two weeks now. And we'll see what... There are no accidents. There are no coincidences. That's one of uh, uh, Jethro Gibbs' rules. There are no coincidences. Always look. Always look. So Leanne and I are on a mission to figure out this ketosis thing. And this Dr. Boz may have just done it for us. And so we're reading this book. I recommend you read this book. I'm just on chapter three. I don't know if it has a good ending or a bad ending, but
but I do know that I'm going to learn something from it. So I'm getting my little teapot out and I'm going to pull a little topic for us. And then I'm setting up. Well, that was the wise old owl. Last night I got a fortune cookie at, at the Chinese restaurant and it said, you, you will create more wisdom as you get older. Well, isn't that the truth for everybody? <laughs> Woo. Woo. What we got today is the importance of eating together as a family at the dinner table. Listen to this. I have, I have tears in my eyes. Whew. Where's my purple rag when I need it? Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to... <laughs> you know, this got me. This got me because we're talking about eating in a wonderful, wonderful way. You know, we can eat good all day long, but if we don't sit down with our family and show them how we're eating, they're not going to know. They're not going to know what's good to eat. If you don't have those babies in the kitchen with you, helping you to prepare meals, they're not going to know how to sit down to the table and eat. If you don't have those babies sit, sitting the table, setting the table for you and teaching them how to hold their knife and fork when they grow up, they're not going to know how to how to have manners unless of course they take an adulting class in college. That's what mommies and daddies are for, to teach children how to act at the dinner table. Sitting down together to have a meal. Leanne's got the statistics on it. You know, this is her, this is her domain, but sitting down together. If your kitchen isn't clean, you know what you do? You head out the door and you go to a restaurant or you go grab pizza and you sit around the table, you sit around your coffee table and eat pizza in the living room because your kitchen is messy. When we can get our children involved in what's going on at the dinner table, you're going to be blown away at the changes in your children. Having dinner together, the importance of eating together as a family, as a family, That says it all. Because if you don't have this, when are you going to sit down and talk to your kids? They've got so many busy things to do. This is the one thing I appreciate about my son and his lovely wife, my daughter-in-law, and my grandchildren. They sit down to the dinner table. They have breakfast together. They have if they're home, they sit down and have lunch together and they have dinner together and they say the blessing over their food and, and they talk. They talk to one another. They talk to one another about what's happened in their day. This is the time you have a basket and you put your cell phones in a basket. I've, I've gotten into the habit of putting my cell phone in my little purse and I don't open it up during dinner. This giving your children wings is teaching them how to sit down at the table and act properly. Not perfect, but proper. Proper. And to say thank you and please pass the butter beans or uh, 
may I have the salt, please? And teaching them how to pass a dish. I learned this in Girl Scout camp. I learned how to, let me see if I've got something that I can use as a platter. Okay, so if, if you're going to hand somebody a dish, you hand it with the opposite hand. If you receive it, you receive it with, you receive it with this hand and then you put it in this hand and pass it that way. Did you know that there was a procedure for that? And you all, I, I don't know if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, but it works around the table. You don't cross the table. You always pass things around the table. Unless it's just two people at the table. So it's learning manners, learning to set the table, learning to use the forks. You know, not sitting down to the dinner table is akin to having your calendar hidden from your family. If you don't put the calendar in front of your family, they're not going to know what's, what's scheduled. And planning your menus, oh my, and getting them on the calendar, you might actually get some help in the kitchen. If you say, okay, we're having this for dinner, and they might be really hungry and start dinner for you. How cool would that be to get home one day and the kids have started dinner for you? So you see, sitting down to the dinner table with your family is important in communication. It's important in health issues. It's important in manners. It's important in um, just loving one another loving one another and being kind. So all of these things, this was a great topic for today because it's the weekend. Most of our kids only know how to eat with their hands. They pick up a chicken nugget and eat it. They don't know how to cut it with a knife and fork. They don't know how to, um, utilize their napkin in their lap. So it starts with a clean kitchen and then you don't mind getting into the kitchen and cooking. It's all it takes. A clean kitchen invites you in. The kitchen is the heart of your home. If you're gonna ignore your kitchen, you're ignoring your health, your children's health, your children's wings, giving them the ability to grow up and know something about being in a kitchen instead of a millennial who knows nothing about getting in the kitchen and cooking. Nothing. Nothing. You don't want to know why they know nothing? Because their family didn't eat around the dinner table. Their family didn't, their, their day did not revolve around having dinner as a family. If you could establish one habit for your family to create better adults, it would be sitting down to the dinner table every night with your children. Every night with your children. And no, you don't have cats at the dinner table and cats are not people. They might sleep with you in the bed, but they're not people. And I think that's probably a troll, so they need to go away. So that's the importance of having dinner with the, eating together as a family. It is. Sit down, put the phones away, and enjoy your company. Enjoy your family as company. Sit out, set out the good dishes. Don't just do it at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Serve, serve unsweet tea in, in goblets. You're going to make the family happy. They're going to say, uh-oh, the pod people have arrived. But guess what? That's okay. Because you're starting something new. And when it becomes automatic that everybody wants to set the table and everybody wants to be there and they don't want to miss dinner because dinner's the best time. And this isn't making them eat everything on their plate. That's not what this is about. This is about 
loving one another, lifting each other up. And it's going to change your life and it's going to change the future for your children. They're no longer going to be, they're no longer going to be, y'all quit posting about cats. I don't want to see cats right now. I'm talking about something important. It's having dinner at a dinner table. And if you live alone, set your place at the dinner table. You deserve to have a place setting instead of, and, and my, I work, this new book is going to have some rules. And one of the rules in the book is don't eat standing up. Set your, set your place. Put your fork and your knife and your spoon and your napkin. At Treat yourself like you would treat company. Yep. Now you might, if you're alone, you might sit there and read a book. But that's fine. You can put on some fine music and enjoy your meal. See how, how slow you can eat your dinner. Make it a festive time. Light a candle. So everybody, what are you doing for date night? I don't know yet. It's Robert's turn. So I might get surprised. I love you all. And I love cats too. Bye.